Hey, sixth grade, we're going to start working on our mosaic today. Uh, so what you will need is the photograph that you're going to be using for this. Hopefully that is already downloaded to your computer. Um, if it is not downloaded to your computer. Um, it could also be uploaded to your Google Drive. Um, your Google Drawing program works in tandem with your Google Drive. So if it's in your Google Drive, you should be able to get it out of there. If not, what I would do is uh, search for your image, find it, download it, get it into your computer, and then you'll reload it up into your uh, drawing. If you happen to take a photo um, of something yourself that you want to do, maybe it's one of your pets or something like that, um, go ahead and upload it to your Google Drive or um, email it to yourself. Open up your email, download it to your Chromebook, and then it'll be ready to insert, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, um, work on this right here. And let me uh, just shrink my view. And I'm gonna put myself up here in the corner. And this is the uh, thing that we're gonna work on. Now, we already did some practice. Uh, we learned about these tools. Um, the main tools we're gonna be using are right here in the line menu, okay? Um, we're gonna be using this polyline tool mainly. Uh, by the way, what I recommend today is watching this video but then pausing it and opening up a new tab with your own drawing in it or your own mosaic and working on it side by side with this video. And the reason why I recommend doing that is because it's really easy to forget how I do different things as I do them. So I, that's kind of what I recommend is going ahead and, and doing it that way. So the polyline tool is the main thing we're gonna be using. Um, I'm gonna first go ahead and put my photograph in here, okay? Um, now. Actually, let me back up a step. Before you do that, um, depending on the image that you chose, you may want a different sized Google drawing. So the standard size is uh, four by three. Um, and I think it's 10 inches long if this were gonna print out on paper, okay? Um, what you can do though, is you can go to page setup, And you could change this to widescreen if you wanted to, um, or uh, a custom size. When you do a custom size, you're gonna be changing the inches of it. So you may not wanna actually mess with that, but this would basically make it look, um, I'll show you what it looks like here. So if you've got a, a longer picture, that may work really well to do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and undo that. I'm gonna click insert image. And I'm going to upload from computer. Now, if it is in your Google Drive, just go ahead and find it there. Okay. Um, this camera here, that would actually be using your webcam on your um, Chromebook. So you probably don't want that. And I went ahead and downloaded this pair picture. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now, it's a little bit on the small side right now, right? It, it doesn't fit in the whole drawing. So I wanna make it bigger, okay? So I'm gonna use the select tool and I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna put it kinda of in the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this larger. Now, here's an important tip. When you are scaling a photo, and I, when I use the word scaling, what I'm talking about is making a photo bigger or smaller. Only grab it by the corners, okay? When you grab the photo by the corners, what that does is it makes sure that it stays in proportion, okay? So like if I made it smaller, the parrot still looks normal. If I grab it by the side and not the corner, look what happens. I make them all fat looking, right? And then if I'm like, oh no, I gotta stretch him out. He still doesn't look right. It looks a little fine looking, right? So let's back up a couple steps and go back to this, okay, so we're going to scale him using the corner only. And I'm going to just kind of drag it so that the length of the parrot is at least the length of um, my drawing. There we go. I think I want to even do this just a little bit more. And it's okay that the photograph goes a little bit off of the, um, the canvas here. That's okay, um, because 
uh, it's going to get cut off right here, and, and we can we can kind of see that. And I can also click, I can use the arrow keys if I want to reposition it a little bit. I can just kind of tap an arrow key, and it will sort of shift it up or down a little bit as well. So that's what I just did. Okay, so we're good. Um, I would go ahead and pause the video and insert your photo right now. Do that right now. Next step, we have to create a shape for the background, okay? Um, in fact, you know what, this is kind of all sort of small for me, so here's another little trick. I'm gonna hit the F11 button on my computer, and that's gonna go full screen for me. Isn't that a lot better? Um, and then I can just work on the whole thing. So hitting F11, so you gotta remember, F11 is what you press to get back to normal. Okay, so if you're ever in full screen view, hit F11 and uh, um, you'll get back to normal. So I'm gonna draw a shape. And this shape that I'm gonna draw, this is gonna be my background color, okay? So I'm gonna just make this bigger than the whole thing. And it fills in blue. I'm going to make it black. And then I'm gonna send it to the back. So I'm going to right click. You think, I think on Chromebooks, you're going to do a two tap click. Um, and it's send backward would be one step, send to back all the way back. There's only one thing to send behind right now, so this is fine. Okay, uh, go ahead and pause the video and do that step. Now we want to start drawing our shapes, all right? Uh, so we're basically ready to go. Um, now, what I want to show you first, though, is kind of think about this. Um, I'm going to change this just to kind of show you what I'm talking about real quick. You want to look at your, oops, I did that on the, uh, the rectangle, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I want you to think about the different parts of your animal or whatever. And you want to kind of divide it up into sections. And you're going to do each section one at a time. And you're going to create little mosaic tiles in each of these sections. So for me, I've got this parrot and there's the big red part right here. So you can see this sort of red part here, right? You can also sort of see the beak right here, okay? Um, the head is kind of its own little section too. Um, and then I've got these sort of blue wings in here. And then I've got the red wings for the tail, okay? So those are all my different sections that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and undo all those lines I just drew. So I'm gonna start on that head section. And what I wanna do is I wanna start creating little tiny tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that polyline tool that we practiced in class, okay? And I'm going to zoom way in. Now the zoom, it has a menu, okay? If you open up this menu, this can get confusing. Just click the magnifying glass, okay? And then you can zoom right in. Oops, I went back to the select tool for some reason. I think when I'm recording video and trying to operate on this thing all at the same time, my computer's been running a little bit choppy and slow. All right, so there's, there's a close-up of my guy. Okay, so here we're going to work on this. Now, I want to make tiled shapes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create tiled shapes that kind of form the shape of his head. I'm going to make different tiled shapes for his beak and different tiled shapes for uh, this inside part here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create one tile right here. There's tile number one. And I'm going to create my next tile next to that one, leaving a little bit of space. And that's important, okay? Leave a little bit of space when you're drawing these tiles. Don't just, don't let them overlap because mosaics have space in between them. And in order to, for this to really look like a mosaic, you're going to want that space in between them. I'm going to make a smaller one here to kind of catch a little bit of that yellow orange when I end up coloring this in. And then I'm going to go ahead and 
I'm going to follow the shape of his head for this one. And then that shape underneath, uh, we'll get to that later when I do the body. All right. Um, and so let's go ahead. I'm going to just make a few different tile shapes here. And it's like I'm creating a puzzle. And so if you've already kind of figured this out, now would be a good time to pause the video and uh, go ahead and, and try this out right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause my recording for a second here. And I'm going to work a little bit further. Okay, so I'm going to pause and through the magic of recording, uh, there's going to be a lot more done in a second. Okay. Ta -da! I'm back and there's a little bit more finish. The whole head's finished, the insides part finished. I didn't finish the beak because I wanted to show you this part. So one thing that the polyline tool does not do well is curves because it only makes straight lines, okay? So you, as long as you're aware of that, it, it works fine, okay? So what you wanna do when you're making curves is you just wanna make a lot more clicks. So if I need to do a curve line, I'm gonna click much shorter. One, two, Three, four, five clicks. I'm going to bring this one in. I'm going to make this beak out of two shapes, I think. And so curving down one, two, four, five, and back up. So you can tell it's not a perfect curve, right? It's not bad. And that's what we're looking for. And so basically you're gonna do this on your entire piece, uh, and then you're gonna color it in. Now, if you want to, you can do little sections at a time, okay? Um, so to color it in, what you need to do is grab the select tool and you're going to select uh, your, your shapes, okay? and you're going to color them in by just grabbing this fill color and finding the color that you want to fill in. Now, a couple things. Let's let's put this sort of red color in here for now. Um, you can tell that this red color, it's okay, but it doesn't really match, okay? Um, so that could work. So let's talk a little bit about colors and how to fill these in in a couple different tips. Um, so another thing you can do is first, make these transparent, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiple select these. So the way to do that, I have to touch a key on my keyboard, the control key, CTRL. So it's in the lower left-hand corner of your keyboard. Click that, and or hold that, sorry, and then click multiple shapes at the same time. And if you do that, you will select more than one shape at once. Wait for my computer to catch up with me here. Okay, now we're going to do fill color and I'm going to go transparent. Okay. So now I can see through all the shapes. I missed one here. That's okay. Um, so, for example, if I want to now just select this one, okay. Maybe I click off of this first. I'm going to select just this shape. I'm going to fill this one in. And let's go with like a light gray. Um, also, I wanted to show you, sometimes if you've got a perfect shape in there, you can actually just use the shape tool instead of the polyline tool. So I wanted to just throw the eye in there like so. Um, that'll work just fine for my eye. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill this one in, another gray. Maybe just slightly darker than that other one. Or did I do the same color? I think I did the same color.
Okay. Now, to find the perfect color, you don't have every color in the rainbow up here. You only have like 70 colors to pick from, okay? So there is a way to find a custom color. So let's say I want this sort of bright orange red right here, okay? Um, if I'm looking there, none of these really match that color. This one's okay. This one's okay too, but they're not quite there. So what you can do is go to custom color. And this opens up this color chooser, okay? So the first thing you do is slide this and that changes your base hue, okay? So the main kind of color. So red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, purple, pink, back to red, okay? And then you can choose any mix from black to white, okay? So I want that sort of reddish orange mix. And I can kind of drag this slider over a little bit. Let's try that. Hey, I did pretty good. That's not too bad, okay? Um, so I'm pretty happy with that color, all right? Um, and maybe uh, I go ahead and go to um, fill color, um, go back to my custom color picker again, um, maybe drag down to here again and do something just a little different on this one, um, maybe a little, more like that. Um, this one here, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker and you're gonna see that they, they're they really similar looking, right? You can barely tell the difference between them because I haven't made major shifts or changes in them. So let's go a little darker with this one, but a little more towards the orange. Not quite so dark. All right, now uh, let's see how we're doing. Let's zoom back out, okay? So I can go fit to screen or I can hold the control button um, and zoom out as well. Uh, either one works. So here is my tile. So they look a lot smaller now, right? Um, but you can then uh, take your photo and you can either delete it um, or, uh, so delete it by hitting backspace and see how you're doing. Hey, that looks pretty good so far. And, but I'm going to undo that. Um, bring it back. Another, I think, smarter way to do this instead of deleting it is just send it to the back. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to send it all the way to the back. That way it goes below my black background, but I never get rid of the photo because if you delete the photo and then you close out Google Drawing, you're never going to get your photo back. Okay. So go ahead and try this, get started. I'm excited to see what uh, uh, you guys have. Um, so you do not need to finish this today. I just wanted you to try these things out, try to get the base, the start of your tiles on your image. That's what you're looking to do. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can share it with me. Um, click the share button up here and send it to me. If you want me to check it over, you can leave me a note in there too. Um, I'm able to comment. If you share it with me, you can give me the right to edit it. I can help make fixes on it as well. So those are all possibilities also. So uh, go ahead and get started on it. I'm excited to see what you guys do. And uh, I will see you guys live next week.